Also, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> I keep some money in my. Hi guys. Today I'm participating in the collab started by Sensible Living with Money Mom. And the topic of the collab, what can you do in addition to the emergency fund to prepare for the emergency? So the tip number one is to have more than one streams of income. As you might know, my husband doesn't have his income right now, but, and we live mostly of the emergency fund, but I still do have my small part-time jobs that brings me about $500 a month. Um, in addition to that, I, and make a little bit of money here and there from selling stuff like from our backyard like the eggs from our chickens uh, some chickens and other pets animals whatever I can to bring at least a few dollars here and there so even if you have a small and tiny stream of income like some people have YouTube I make very little on YouTube that's like once a year payment uh, which is probably gonna go away which is like not a big loss because it was it wasn't much anyways but I'm hoping to get enough watch time to get it back maybe in a couple months so even if the stream of income is tiny and small it's still worth it even if it's something small like a rebate for something you buy even if it's like money back from the credit cards that you use for the stuff you have to buy for the bills you have to pay anyways it still counts every penny counts the second tip is to have a stockpile i always have a stockpile of food like non-perishable stuff uh toilet paper most of the times i even have animal food my dog food my chicken food my goat food i have i have enough for a few months most of the time unless there hasn't been any good sale for a while or I just didn't have money before so most of the time I have enough stuff that doesn't spoil uh, to last us a few months also if you have a backyard if you have any animals garden and any other kind of things any fruit trees that can provide you some food um, some fresh food from like right from the farm from your backyard that's that's another food stockpile which is like it's not gonna spoil but it needs attention like every day so we um, have eggs from our chickens and some fruit trees and like in the summertime we have a garden so we get some extra food that way so if an emergency happens in the summertime we're good except our electricity bill is usually high in the summers so it balances out tip number four is to take care of your stuff that you have like stuff you use your house your appliances your car everything so it lasts longer it doesn't break in the worst moment possible uh, like if you know your car is super old you need to start saving money for a new one ahead of time if like we know we've just replaced our water heater maybe uh, over a year ago so it's still gonna be good for a while so we don't need to save for that but I know our dishwasher is old our stove is old our fridge is old so any of these things might just break at any time so we better have some money in addition to emergency fund for those things too because some of it is on its last legs and uh, it barely functions <laughs> stove I mean barely functions my oven turns off by itself I don't know why I have to if I'm baking something I have to restart like turn on the oven every half an hour it just turns off by itself I don't know what's wrong with it <laughs> it's been like that for 10 years for the last 10 years we bought this house we had this oven in here and it's been like that and it still functions barely we learned to live with it and we're not replacing it yet but once it dies, we're gonna have to replace it. So for that, we better have some emergency extra money. 
uh, taking care of your stuff, it also includes your health. Because before I was trying to save as much money as possible on my food bill because that's, that's like a thing that costs you money every month and like you, you can't just not eat, you have to eat something. So even though I was, we were trying to eat as cheaply as possible, we still had variety and um, not a lot of junk food, but I think we need to incorporate more fruits and vegetables and a lot more healthy stuff and eliminate all the bad stuff as much as possible because your health if something goes wrong it's gonna cost you a ton of money and you can't like be sure that nothing ever goes wrong but uh there's more less chance for something to go wrong if you eat healthy and take care of your health and exercise or at least do some kind of physical work and all that so tip number five which is the most important tip uh, is to have a low overhead which I mean like uh, which I mean um, low overhead is uh, have your bills the stuff you have to pay like your housing and all these things would be not a lot every month like we pay mortgage for our house a lot cheaper than the rent in the area and we also don't have um, sewer bill because we have our own septic we also um, don't have water bill because we have our um, uh, well pump so the, we don't have those two bills we also use um, wood in the winter time so we don't have to have a huge um, heater bill so all those things if you can just survive without having to pay all these bills if your house is set up for that um, all this money you're saving every month can go to your emergency fund plus if something happens all of a sudden you don't have a ton of bills you have to pay every month even if you just um, don't like use anything those bills still have to be paid like your um, sewer and um, water bill they still charge you well, we do have garbage bill, which I hate the most because we have so little garbage and they still have to charge us for the huge bin. Even though we have like the smallest one possible, it still costs money and there's no way to get rid of it. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of um, people live in the places where they maybe have HOA fees or garbage fees or any other kind of fees that they cannot get rid of unless they move. So. <laughs> For me, I feel better to live in an area where I don't have all these uh, extra bills that, you know, you can just live without them. And also, I, I'm happy that I live in an area where I can like hang my laundry outside, because in many places you cannot. <laughs> you just, uh, all those rules and uh, stuff, but I can do that. Especially in summertime, saves a lot of money, and uh, I can have my animals in the backyard that provide us additional food. So, in some places where people live, or if they live in an apartment, they cannot have any of that. So they're stuck with the huge bills every month that they have to pay, even if they don't use anything. Also, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> I keep some money in my car for emergencies like if I forget my wallet or something or, or I run out of cash in my wallet and then there's some place that don't take any form of cards just cash I always have a few dollars in my car so that's my another tiny emergency fund but that's a secret also another tip I just I just thought about it uh, learn to live frugally this way if the emergency happens you already know how to live frugally and you already saved up some money by now because you already were, uh, uh, I can't talk now because you were already living frugally so you probably saved up a huge emergency fund or at least paid off your debt so you don't have those uh, payments no more so you can save more of your um, additional um, you can save more of your income that you are getting uh, Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and go check out Sensible Living with Money Mom and any other participants that participate in this collab. 
which she has a few listed under her video and if I know of somebody doing it I'm gonna link their video below too and have your emergency fund and be ready for any emergency because unless you're ready you can't really do much once it happens unless you're willing to work 24 7 which is not really that good for your health and your mental well-being okay thank you so much for watching bye